Yes, ma'am. Uh, there are a few questions. There's one question. Uh, I think so. It's a mix of two sessions simultaneously. So we'll take up whether it is. Paul Miller, sir, I think so. Uh, we'll be honored if you join us for the valedictory as well. So parallel, I can take questions from P.K. Dashura, sir, Paul Miller. So we have one question from Dr. Uh, Shima Sarupriya Udaipur, she says the attributes, qualities, characteristics, conduct, behavior of an educational leader speaks volumes of the making. That is the chemistry of a person concerned. Thus, the content of education is important, but the issue is how to make everyone a self-regulated leader in the current situation that is negatively affected by the value deficit in general. It is, it is a very, very good question. Um, and uh, I think, you know, what, what we have seen in society is this individualization, where people no longer have communitarian values. And uh, so um, that is breaking away the fiber of society. But organizations um, have to help its members to to solve the problems of equity and justice and i think what organizations can do is to make sure that every worker whether you are the cook in the school canteen or you're the security man at the gate or you're the teacher or you're the head teacher I think what, or the vice chancellor, I think what the school or the university can do is make sure that equity is a target on everybody's performance management. So you build a culture. You see, equity is too important a matter to be left up to volunteering to do it. If we want an equitable institution, if in England, if we want an institution that is that is not racist, you know what we have to do? We have to make sure that equity, diversity and social justice becomes a performance management target for every single person in the organization, but especially the managers, because the managers are the ones who create a culture in the different units. And so if we make it a performance management target. You cannot pass your, your performance review if you don't demonstrate how you have done equity and social justice. You cannot get a pay increase if you, if you do not demonstrate how you do this. And a school cannot be rated outstanding by Ofsted if they don't demonstrate. Ofsted means the inspectorate in England. You cannot you know, get an outstanding rating if you do not demonstrate how. So in other words, we have to make it a culture where everybody is playing their part and you have to make it a culture where it will hurt people in other words if you are going to lose your money you're going to work towards not losing your money and if you're not going to get an outstanding badge from the school inspectorate you're going to work to make sure you get an outstanding badge so in other words we cannot leave equity simply to people volunteering to do good doing good is not in everybody's nature so we have to make sure that we create the rules to make sure they do good. Very rightly said. Thank you so much, sir. Then uh, Dr. Dashura, we have a question from Dr. Wasif from Jordan. He is asking, is it possible to find a leader in any field in society without human values? No, not at all. A leader, a leader has to have his own value system, which is to be accepted by the society and the group for which he, he is a leader. There is a set rule for operating in a proper manner. If a, if a leader cannot formulate rules, if a leader cannot adhere to the rules, if a leader cannot ensure the way shown by Miller, that is equality to equity, perhaps he will not be a leader for a long time. To remain a leader, 
one has to be on value based and that value should be directed from equality to equity and equity for all masses at same level thank you thank you very much sir and uh, professor paul we have a question from dr anil paliwal udaipur rajasthan from india he is asking is educational leadership affected by color if so how to eradicate it i think i i think the ability to lead is not one of color the ability to lead is not one of color it's not one of gender uh, it's not one of class it's not one of disability or ability it is about opportunities however in england england is a racist society and my work is about racism and leadership now i told you earlier there are 22 24000 281 school principals in England of those 24281 school principals in England 377 of those are not white that is about structural racism in the university we have 192000 academics we have about 18000 professors 95 of them are black that's not because black people are worse than white people that's because the system is racist and do not give the same opportunities to a, a non white person as they would to a white person so the quality of leadership is not about gender we need more women to be leaders we need more asian leaders more black leaders more non white leaders but let's be clear about it the white people are the ones who control the power they control the money they control the access and until we can fix the problem with the pipeline meaning until we get more women black people asian people chinese people you name it until we get more non white people at the table then i'm afraid this problem discrimination will continue and i'm afraid the problem of being being of white leadership will continue but i think leadership is leadership it knows no gender it knows no color it knows no class it knows no ability but there is structural inequalities in the system that we need to fix first professor paul similar to what just now you have discussed there is one uh, query coming up from professor pushpanathan he is a professor in ms university baroda he is saying that leadership is all about leading the group the followers without any discrimination by providing equal opportunities and nurturing capabilities so that the next generation leaders evolve you mentioned about activism and it deals with fighting for rights how can you define a leader without working for social justice well a leader who doesn't fight for social justice for all is not a leader and again if you think about privilege there are there are there are 12 types of biases eh all of us have these biases and prejudices and we hear about unconscious bias all the time and you have the affinity bias which mean you know you clone people in your own image so you look into organizations in england for example and white people will want to recruit white people they will want to promote white people but not only will white people want to promote white people and recruit white people they want to recruit people who are in the middle class or in the upper class because they are the ones who are in the middle class they go to the same universities they go to the, they socialize in the same spaces and so on the same values and so on right now if a leader does not see me as a jamaican let's just be clear about that i'm a jamaican living and working in england right i have a british passport but i'm a jamaican so let's just be clear about that right so if if my leader does not see me a black man with my talent with my education as being equivalent 
there is a problem. If my leader does not see a female, whether she's born here or not, as equivalent, that's a problem. If my leader, because he's from the work, he's from the, the middle class, only sees people who goes to a certain type of university, who speak with a posh voice, who have middle class values, then working class people, migrants, minority ethnic people, disabled people, women, and so on, they will never have an opportunity. And therefore, the leader has got to fight for the material rights and privileges for all, not only those who look like them or those who speak like them or who those who are rich like them or those who come from the social classes like them or those who are educated at universities like them, but for all, regardless of where they come from, who they are, what they are and what they're about. That is social justice. Very beautifully explained, Professor Paul. Now we have a question to uh, Dr. Uh, Professor P. K. Dashura, sir. It's coming from Dr. Pratibha Verma, who's an associate professor at BCV in Navi Mumbai. She says, sir, as you quoted, the human values from Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, which are full of these human values. So why these values are not included in the syllabus of schools and colleges? How can these values be imbibed in school college system? Before imbibing these values in school and college system, we must make ensure we must make it sure that they are imbibed in our life and in our families. Because if it is not there in our life and in our families, perhaps in school and colleges, we will just mug it up write into the answer book, pass it, make grades, and obtain the position after educating ourselves. So imbibing these values in our life, it comes from the family and from the mother, as I mentioned in my talk. So we should make it sure first there, then automatically it will be there in the curriculum. It is a simple process of bring it in the curriculum that we should have it in our life, if it is in our life, then the person who is uh, framing the curriculum will put it there. Because it is necessary. It is not there because the person who are framing curriculum, they are not responsible for it. They are responsible for some other benefits. They are some responsible for some other targets. As uh, for social justice, Professor Paul Miller has uh, rightly mentioned in some other context. Right. Very nice. Can I, can, I, can I just try and add to what um, uh, Dr. Dashora has said? Because I think it's a really yeah. interesting thing. We, yeah. we are having the same conversation in England here now about the curriculum and we should diversify and decolonize the curriculum. And it's a really powerful answer Dr. Dashora gave, a really powerful answer. You know, if you remember I talked about that fire in your belly, you can change the curriculum all you want. But if the values are not imbibed in your soul, in your belly, in your heart, in your value system, in your belief system, then it will mean absolutely nothing. Furthermore, the people who are writing the curriculum, they are not writing the curriculum because they want to create an equitable and just society. They want to keep people in their places. It is what you call interest convergence and interest divergence. For them, it's about making money. For them, it's not about society being more egalitarian or more value centered. No, for them, they don't give anything about education. They don't care about education. You know, for them, it's about making money. So I think it comes back to what Dr. Dashar was saying earlier. Do unto others as you have them do unto you. If that sense of social justice, that emancipatory activism is not first in your belly as a leader, as a teacher, as a manager, at whatever level, then the problems that we are talking about, I'm sorry, they will be here 10 years down the road, 20 years down the road. Right? But our curriculum will matter very little if we change it, if we don't change our minds and our hearts and our values. But we have to change our hearts and our minds and our values, and then we can go and lobby politicians to change the curriculum. 
that so so nicely supplemented and i think so uh, these platforms provide us an opportunity where we get to understand the perspective from different points of view and then coming to a consensus so i think so this six days webinar has given us the appropriate platform and the opportunity where we all can deliberate and come with workable solutions and there are a lot many questions that are coming up in the chat box and besides the questions i think so we can uh, take them up in our next sessions maybe next session that we plan or through emails we'll try to answer the questions that have come up because we are uh, running short of time as at 4 pm we start with our valedictory program so here i would like to extend a warm thanks to professor paul miller sir for giving this wonderful keynote address professor himlata talesra ma'am the director of the webinar for, co for coordinating this beautiful session and before this we had a session that was also very interesting and appreciated by our audience so professor p k dashura sir you have very rightly talked about the uh, leadership for developing human values not only you have delivered i think so today's both the sessions have been an insight and eye opener for the audience because they have given us a path on which we can look from different directions and we can be our own path builders rather than by going on what has already been established it is the time to in introspect it is the time to explore it is the time to experiment it is the time to come together and i think so in this collaborative manner the way professor himlata talesra the director of the webinar has brought into different people from different streams from different parts of the globe i think so definitely we will work upon the strategies and the workable solutions so now we move to the formal valedictory program i think so with permission of professor himlata talesra ma'am we will start with the valedictory program over to you ma'am so sima yes ma'am start validity session thank okay. you to all and we are in the validity session now please thank you so much ma'am